Let's go ahead and implement our view to view model binding. Now you can see that I'm creating a completely separate application because I want to show you how binding works in isolation and not really part of any large project. Once again, binding is not really available in UI kit applications. If you are building a Swift UI application, then there are features for state binding, binding environment binding, and all of that stuff. But in our application that are UI kit based, there is no default structure for binding. So the first thing we need to do is to construct some sort of a user interface. And I'm going to go with creating a username and the password text box. Now you can create all of these different user interface in any way that you like. I'm just going to write the code in Swift language to create the interface rather than using the storyboard. But you can use storyboard if you like. That's perfectly fine too. So I'm going to go ahead and create a function called setup UI. The first thing I need to do is I need to create a user name text field. So let's go ahead and create a username text field. Now this will be a UI text field. And we will have some sort of a placeholder, border style, some sort of a background color that we can use, and that's our username text field. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and create the password text field. So we'll call it password text field, which is of type UI text field. And we will have a couple of different properties that we're going to set over here, similar to the username text field, which is secure entry is true, placeholder, background color, and border style. Let's go ahead and also create a button. So once again, we're going to write some code to create a button. And we can go ahead and even say login button dot add target self. So when the button is clicked, we are going to be calling a selector a function called login. And when will this happen? When whenever we do touch up inside. So when we touch inside the button, that function is going to get fired. Now this particular login function does not really exist. So let's go ahead and create that. Function login, and we're going to decorate it with Objective C since selector needs, and this is like old API that's working. It needs to know the object that this particular function can be called using the Objective C protocols. Let's go ahead and build it. Okay, so that's all fine. We still need to make sure that we have used some sort of a control to add all of these controls on the screen. So I'm just going to use the stack view. And in the stack view, I'm going to go ahead and add the username text field, the password text field, as well as the login button. We still have to set up some constraints so that we can put the stack view on the screen. So self.add.subview, stack view. But currently, we don't really have any constraints, so it's not really going to appear. So let me go ahead and put some constraints to it. And this time, when we run the app, we will be able to see our username text field, password text field, as well as the login button being displayed. You can see it's a pretty nice and simple kind of a form, nothing complicated. Now, what we want to do is whenever I start typing in a username text field or the password text field, we want to automatically populate a view model. Currently, we don't even have a view model. So let's go ahead and create a new group. We will call it view models. We're going to create a brand new file to represent our view model. You can name your view model anything you want. I'm just going to call it login view model. And what we want to do now is to construct a very basic view model. So I'm just going to go ahead and say login view model. Uh, your view model, depending on the needs, uh, you can make it a struct also that should be fine also. So let's go ahead and create it a struct var username string and var password as a string and empty. Okay, so we have a login view model which consists of two different properties. 
username and password and both are initialized to be empty strings. Now, one of the things that we want to do is as soon as we are typing in the username text field or the password text field, we grab the value that you're typing in the text field and assign it to the view model. For this to happen, we will have to go ahead and create an instance of the view model. So let's go ahead and say login view model equals to login view model. But now the question is, whenever we're typing something in either of these text fields, how can we populate the username property of the login view model? Now, one of the ways that we can achieve that is by capturing the event that is generated from the UI text field. And for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a custom view. Custom view means that instead of using a UI text field that does not really have any built-in support for binding, we are going to go ahead and create our own binding text field. So this means that we're going to be creating a new control, new view binding text field, which is going to be inheriting from UI text field. Now, in order for this to work, we do need to overwrite a couple of different functions. So init with frame, that's the initializer, and we will fire the designated initializer for that. The other one is the init with coder. Uh, so init with coder is gonna get fired whenever we are trying to use the user interface or the storyboards to construct a binding text field. We're not really using storyboards, but if you were, then you would, this particular function or initializer is gonna get called when you deserialize the XML that is generated from the storyboard uh, into the surf code. Now we want to perform some sort of a common operation based on all of these different initializers. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a common initializer and we will call it common init. This particular initializer can be called from any of those two initializers. So let's go ahead and do that. Now inside the common initializer, what we want to do is to attach the editing change event. So whenever we type something in the binding text field, we want to listen to that. So this means that I'm gonna go ahead and say add target, self, selector, which I'm just gonna say selector, text field did change, and for the control event, which will be editing change, which means that whenever we are typing something in the text box, uh, this particular function, text field did change, is gonna get fired. Now, currently we don't really have that function, but we can quickly go ahead and create that. This particular function, we will be passed automatically the actual text field on which you are performing this operation. Now, even though we have this particular function, what we need to do is we need to give the opportunity to the caller to subscribe to the changes. And one of the ways that you can subscribe to the changes is by creating your own closure. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create another closure, which will take in a string and we will initialize it with kind of like an empty body. And when the person wants to initialize this text change, basically they need to subscribe to the events that are generated by the text field did change event whenever we're typing something, they will need to first of all make sure that they are binding to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this a bind function. Although you can call this anything you want again, so over here, they're gonna be passing in a closure which takes in a string and doesn't really return anything. And you can see that this particular signature is exactly matching the one that we just created. So this means that we can simply assign text change equals to the callback. So now the outside, meaning the caller, can bind, pass in a closure, and that closure will be assigned to a text change property, the one that is on line number 13 and we can invoke it later on. So first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and unwrap the text. 
Once it is unwrapped, I can simply call the text change function passing in the text. And that is going to make sure that the caller gets the text that is being changed, which basically means whatever you are typing in the text box. Our work is still not done because we have been using a UI text field, and now we have created our own text field, which is binding text field. So let's go ahead and start using the binding text field instead of UI text field. And we also need to make sure that we are binding to the changes. So username text field dot bind, and that's the function that's going to give you the actual text which are be which is being typed in the text box. So we are going to get the text. And now once we have the text, we can go ahead and assign it to the login view model. Also make sure that you are using weak self over here because you this is the one that you're referring to, like self.login view model. Um, even the login view model is a struct which is a value type. We are using self over here, which is the controller, and we don't really want to hold up the controller by capturing a reference over here. The same exact thing we are going to apply to the password text field. So over here, we can go ahead and apply to the password text field with the password. And that's it. Now we have created a view to view model binding. If I go to the login button, and print out the value of the username and the password, you will see that we are capturing the updated values. So let's go ahead and write something over here. I'm going to go ahead and write John Doe and password. Let's type password. And if I press the login button, you can see that I'm getting John Doe. And I'm not getting the password, which is kind of weird. Binding text field. Oh, so this has to be my password text field and not the username text field. That's what happens when you copy paste. Okay, there we go. Let me go ahead and say John Doe. Password is password. And there we go. So we get both of these things automatically because every time we are pressing a key, the on editing change function is getting fired. And whenever it gets fired, it repopulates the login view model username as well as the login view model dot password. Now, if you want to see it in action, you can always go ahead and print out the value. And I'm just going to go do it for the text over here for the username. And you'll see that every single time you're going to type something in a username text field, you are going to get that event. You can see right there, it is firing that event. So every single time I type something in the text field, uh, this particular closure gets called and something is printed on the screen. So this is how we have created our own binding uh, in a UI kit base application, which means that your view, which in this case is a binding text field, is binded to a particular property on the view model. So this is how this kind of a binding works, which is not really built into the UI kit framework, but you can build kind of like a very basic binding as you have seen. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I have courses ranging from Swift for intermediate advanced developers to Combine, Swift UI Cookbook, Swift UI Declarative Interfaces, Testament Development, Mastering RX Swift, Core Data, MVVM Design Pattern, and much, much more. So definitely go ahead and check out all the links that will be in the YouTube description. Check out the videos and please use the links to purchase these courses. That really helps in creating more content for YouTube and your support is always really appreciated. Thank you so much.